So you know in our culture recently, there's, there's, there's been a lot that's been happening, okay? We, we've, had, we've had George Floyd has, has been murdered. And, and while he was dying, he was saying the phrase, I can't breathe. And, and I think that, you know, that's helped us kind of uncover a larger problem with systemic racism that we have in our culture. But, but I think that there's, there's, a, there's a spiritual meaning behind this phrase, I can't breathe. Even, even this COVID virus, what happens? It's a, it's a respiratory illness and it attacks people to where they can't breathe. And listen, I think that there is, is something that the, that the Lord wants us to hear while our, our, our culture is really crying out, I can't breathe. God is saying, well, come to me to receive breath. God's saying that I'm the one who helps us to breathe. God is the one who's the solution to all of the problems that we have right now in our culture. Psalm chapter 104, starting in verse 29, David writes this. He says, when you hide your face, they are terrified. And when you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. And listen, but God can send your spirit and they are created and you renew the face of the ground. You understand that when breath gets taken away, that God is the source of our breath and that he creates life, that he brings life to us. And so I've simply entitled today's message, Let Us Breathe. Let us breathe breathe. I want us to pray together. Pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, we believe that you are the one who gives us breath. And God, over the next few moments, God, would you use my words, my breath to breathe life into each of us so that we can fulfill the calling that you have on our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us breathe. Let us breathe. I want you to think about that for a moment. I want you to think about this idea. I went to a Wendy's drive through the other day, not the one here. It was a different Wendy's. And when I pulled up to the Wendy's drive through there, uh, the woman over the loudspeaker came and she says, I'm so sorry we're closed because no one showed up to work today. It's only me. And I tried to do it all by myself, but just one person can't do everything that's needed. And so I'm so sorry we're closed. I thought about that. I thought, man, that's crazy. And secondly, I was like, I'm so sorry to hear that because she must have been having a pretty rough day if that's the kind of response that she's giving. But here's, here's what I want you to pull out of this is that you and I, we can't even show up for work. We can't do it. We're, we're not designed to do it alone. We're not supposed to be just one person just figuring out this life alone. We've been given a helper. We've been given a divine assistant. His name is the Holy Spirit, and he works in our lives. He helps us to breathe. In fact, throughout the Bible, the Holy Spirit has been referenced as wind or as breath. I want you to see it in the Old Testament. There's Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, and it says this, as God breathed. Go ahead and, and put that up there for me. I'm having... Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So even in the creation account here, we see that God's breath created life, that life cannot be sustained without the very breath of God in us. Well, Jesus did the same thing with his disciples in John chapter 21, 20, verse 21. It says, and again, Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So here Jesus is just like God the Father in this creation account. God creates Adam and Eve and he breathes life into them. They became living beings. And now spiritually, we are born again and the Holy Spirit breathes into us his life. We come alive. We're born again. We're walking with God. This is the calling that you and I have on our lives. This illustration 
of the Holy Spirit being like wind is not isolated to very simple texts. In fact, one of our fundamental beliefs about the Holy Spirit is the empowerment that he brings. And in Acts chapter two, listen to how he shows up. Acts chapter two, starting in verse one, it says, and when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Get this, the Holy Spirit shows up and one of the manifestations of this is that there was a sound like a gale force, hurricane-like wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What are we saying here? We're saying when the Holy Spirit comes, it's like a a breath of fresh air. It's it's like everything that we've ever needed, God brings that fulfillment and he gives us the power that we need to live our everyday lives. In the Old Testament, there's this there's this prophet that comes, his name is Ezekiel. And and the nation of Israel has has been separated from their homeland. They've been been in captivity. They haven't been free. And all of a sudden, God's gonna do a new thing. And he takes this prophet and he says, I want you to go out to this area. And he sees this vision. And it's like a valley full of dry bones. And listen to what God tells him to begin to prophesy. Ezekiel 37, this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Very important, listen to this. I will attach tendons to you, make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied what I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Listen, God can be doing a work, yet still we're waiting for the life to come. We're waiting for the breath of God. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and I'm prophesying today and breath entered them and breath will enter you and breath will enter this community. And they came to life and they stood up on their feet, a vast army. You understand that when we speak the word of God to our people and we speak to uh, people that are dead in their sins, the Holy Spirit can breathe life into them. They can come to life. And that's what I'm prophesying today. I'm believing that God is going to stir life into us and that we're going to come breathing again. Let us breathe, Lord. So I want to give you three basic things that the Holy Spirit does in us that helps us to breathe. The, the very first thing is this right here. The Holy Spirit spotlights sin and he showcases Jesus as God's son. He, he spotlights sin. He, he, he takes this big old spotlight and he just turns it on your soul. All of a sudden you, you find places in you that's like, oh man, that's not right. Oh, I'm not, I'm not living right there. I'm, I'm not doing it right there. All of a sudden it just, it just comes and it illuminates those areas where we're sinning, where we're far away from God, where we've been living life our own way. The word sin literally means to miss the mark. It's an archery term. We can't do it on our own. We've never been able to do it on our own. And we need Jesus to save us. But he also, the Holy Spirit, he showcases Jesus. He says, man, Jesus is everything that you need. You gotta have Jesus working in your life. Invite him in, invite the son of God to come in. That's the Holy Spirit working in our life. There was a guy named Nicodemus who was a religious teacher and he came to Jesus at night because he didn't want other people to see him and he had some questions. And Jesus begins to reveal these amazing truths to him. In John chapter three, starting in verse three, it says this. Bring it back to verse three right there for him. There we go. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And Nicodemus says, well, how can someone be born when they're old? 
Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water, that's the natural birth in our flesh, and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So what the Holy Spirit does in us is he makes us born again. He brings new life into us. His wind of refreshing breathes into us and we come to, we come to living again. We can breathe spiritually speaking. It's the way that we are born again, that we are breathing living beings because of the power of God working in our hearts and in our lives. That's how God, through the Holy Spirit, he breathes into us. In fact, I put it like this right here. The Holy Spirit, run it back for me, gives us the breath of spiritual life and makes us born again. He gives us breath in, you know, in our spiritual being. We have the vitality, the life of the Holy Spirit living and working in us. God, through his power, does this amazing work in us our lives. Also, in Acts chapter 2, in verse 36 through 39, this is Peter on the day of Pentecost. And he's preaching this sermon. And he says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And then it says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Go to that next slide. And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. There's a couple of things I want you to point out in here. Number one, did you see how the spotlight on sin came forth? It says that they were cut to the heart. Have you ever just been in a place with God where you're just so convicted of sin that you've done and you're just like, oh my goodness, I am, I am undone. I'm like Isaiah the prophet. I'm saying I'm, I'm unclean. I come from a people of unclean lips and I, I don't, that's the, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. He's spotlighting sin. But then the, then the other thing is he's showcasing Jesus as the son of God. When, when you get this revelation that Jesus is the son of God, that he's Lord of all, it's like you're getting everything. And, and, and you know, this word showcase, it makes me think of that television show. I don't know if you've seen it before. It's called The Price is Right, right? Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. At the end of the show, what do they have? They have the, the showcase showdown, right? And, and what, what the narrator does is, is he takes you through a series of all of these wonderful gifts that you're going to receive if you are the winner of this showcase. And, and they're showing you this, and oh, here's the jet ski, and then they got a brand new car, and the person's like, oh my goodness, what? I didn't know it was going to be a car. You definitely knew it was going to be, a, it's always a car, okay? Here, here's what the Holy Spirit does for us. He reveals all of the blessing that we've been given in Christ. Ephesians chapter one, verse three says that we've been given every spiritual blessing in Christ. Well, how come I'm not living up to that? That's because I haven't yet gotten a revelation from the Holy Spirit about what Jesus wants to do for me. Well, why am I going through this? Well, that's because the Holy Spirit still has yet to speak to me, or maybe he's been speaking, maybe I hadn't been listening, about the power that he wants to unleash in my life, and now I just need to, by faith, receive it. You understand that he showcases Jesus, and he says, listen, Jesus got all this stuff for you. All you have to do is just let him have the lordship of your life. Let him be everything that you need, and he's gonna come through. The second thing that the Holy Spirit does is this right here. The Holy Spirit strengthens me to live like Jesus. He, he strengthens me. I can't be like Jesus on my own. I, I don't have enough strength. I don't have enough stamina. I can't get the job done enough. I need the Holy Spirit to come alongside of me so that I can live up to the calling that I've received in Christ. I've been called to a holy life. I need the Holy Spirit. I've been called to impact people's lives and make a difference. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, we can't do anything that we need. We can't even read the Bible on our own. 
You understand, you can't just open up the Bible and just be like, oh yeah, you need the Holy Spirit to bring revelation of what God's word is saying so that we know how to apply it to our lives. In John chapter 14, starting in verse 26, it says this right here. All this, all, verse 25, all this I've spoken while still with you, but the advocate, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I've said to you. Listen, the Holy Spirit, he teaches and he reminds, he brings everything to life. There, there's something about what God is doing. In fact, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says it like this. All scripture is, come on, God breathed. It's, it's the Holy Spirit, it's the breath of God on these pages and it's wind coming and affecting my life. It's something that's coming and impacting me because now I can, now I can be taught, I can be rebuked, I can be corrected, I can be trained so that I can be righteous, so I can do everything that God has called me to do. I need the Holy Spirit. But I need the Holy Spirit and I love this verse because it says he, he, re, he rebukes us and he corrects us. I need him to do this because because sometimes I'm not good enough to figure it out on my own. I had a friend that was on a Zoom call with this week and, and he had went to a, a, a testing site to receive a test for COVID virus. And when he went to the testing site, it was one where you pulled up as a drive-through and they handed you a swab and you had to do it yourself, okay? And, and he did it and, and he gave it and he went back home and he, he, he thought, man, I don't know if, I don't know if I, like did it far enough. I didn't know if I got it right. And so he went back to a different testing site. And at this testing site, you rolled down the window and someone else reached in and they swabbed you. And he said, man, they got the backside of my brain over there, you know? And, and he, it came back negative, praise the Lord. But, but he didn't feel like he was good enough to test himself. You know what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit goes deep into our lives and reaches those corners where you and I would never even think to go. There's just things that Holy Spirit will bring up to you and you'll be like, oh my goodness, yes. I do need God in that area of my life. Yes, I did have an attitude with that right there. Oh yes, I shouldn't have talked to my spouse like that right there. Oh yes, I, I, man, I really cut some corners in that area. I need to have better integrity. Man, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he corrects us and brings us to that point of life. The, the third and the final thing that the Holy Spirit does is this right here. The Holy Spirit signals me to meet the needs of others. He's like, hey, hey, <laughs> bat signal up in the air, you know? He's, he's like, there's someone down here who has a need. You ever thought you just had, man, I got some intuition, man, I just figured that out. No, that was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it, it, in, in, in old church, what we call this, we call it the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I just, I just, felt, I just felt prompted by something. I, I, felt, I felt the Holy Spirit nudging me to go and meet the need of somebody. You ever just been around somebody, you're like, man, I really feel like I should ask them if they need prayer for healing because I just really feel like God wants to heal them. Or, man, you're just around somebody, you're like, now they've not said anything about this, but I think that they might have a financial need and I feel like I need to give them some money. I, I, just, I just need, listen, that's just not you and me. That's just not something that we ate last night. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit and he's, he's signaling me so that I can meet the, meet the needs that someone else has in their life. There's something that God wants me to do that's gonna meet their needs. In this passage from John chapter three that we mentioned, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Jesus says, you gotta be born again, right? He goes on and he says in verse eight, he says that people who are born of the spirit, they're like wind. <laughs> you see the effects of the wind, but you can't see the wind. You understand that people who are living by the spirit, they're people who just, you just, you know there's something about them. You just don't know what it is. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the wind of God. It's the breath of God on our lives. And one of the first times that I drove to Illinois from Georgia, I was driving at night through Northern Illinois or Northern Indiana. Uh, I believe it's like 68, I could be wrong. I forget what the road is right there, but it's coming from Indianapolis to Chicago. It's that interstate there. And there's a section of windmills on that interstate 
that if you're not prepared for this, it's very odd, okay? I, I, was, I was actually driving at night and there was these red flashing lights everywhere, both sides of the roads for as long as you could see. And I was like, I've entered the twilight zone. I actually called my wife just to say, am, am I still alive? Have I been abducted by aliens? I just wanna make sure that this is real life, that this is happening. Since then, I've driven many times now in the daylight even, and there's just these windmills everywhere. In fact, I was, I was letting Bianca drive at one point, and um, I, was, I was videoing out the window, and I was gonna post on my Instagram, and when I went to go tag the location of where we were located, somebody else had already created that location, and they titled it Creepy Windmills. <laughs> and I was like, that's exactly right. They are so weird. It's just this odd experience. And I thought about that. And, and that's what Jesus is basically saying about the Holy Spirit's work in our life. It's, it's so otherworldly. It's so, it's so spiritual and supernatural that, that for some people, it's a little, it's a little creepy. It's, it's a little mysterious, not in a bad way. It's just, wow, how did you know? I got, I got, I got goosebumps when you did that. I can't believe. Listen, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't always come with all the feelings and everything, but I'm telling you, it's that kind of mysterious interaction with this powerful God that we serve that he can do. He alone can do amazing and miraculous things. He works in our lives. I like to think of it like this. The Holy Spirit, because Jesus said he, he reminds us of everything that Jesus has said. What the Holy Spirit does is he, he reminds us that no matter what we go through, that everything God is using to work for our good. He, he reminds us that even in the bad times and the hard times and the times of suffering and fear and anxiety, that, that God is working something for my good and I've just got to keep trusting him. So he comes alongside of me and he says, you can do it. He says, keep going. Pray about that again. Why don't you reach out to a brother or sister and have them pray with you? Hey, today you've got to get up and you've got to do everything that I'm calling you to. Listen, I'm here with you. You can make it. Don't give up. Don't give in. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He comes alongside of us. See, the Holy Spirit, he, he, keeps, he keeps that fresh wind of God in our lives. Reminds me of a commercial that used to come on in the 1990s for a breath mint called Mentos, the fresh maker. I don't know if you remember these commercials, but something bad would happen to the person in the commercial and they would pop a Mentos in their mouth and all of a sudden, they'd get this great idea of how they're gonna turn that bad thing and make it a good thing. One of the commercials, a man, he's going for a job interview. He says goodbye to his friends, and he goes and he sits on a bench so he can look over his briefcase and all the things that he's got, and he's got a nice suit on. And after he sits down, he notices, oh no, there's wet paint on my suit. And so he pops a Mentos, and he lays down on the thing and he rolls around a little bit and it turns his suit into a pinstripe suit. And it says, keeps you fresh, it keeps you cool. <laughs> I think that's what the breath of the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He keeps us fresh and he keeps us cool and calm. So the next time that you face a situation that feels way too big for you, yeah, you, can, you can definitely eat a Mentos. I'd encourage you to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit because he wants to come alongside of you. In fact, he's coming alongside of us today. He's been right here with me, helping me preach today. He's been sitting right beside you, ministering to you. And I think for some people, today might be the day that you come from living away from God to living close to him, to living in a relationship with him. You might be online right now. God might just be speaking to your heart about following him. Listen, that's the Holy Spirit. He's come alongside of me. Here, here's what I, I saw. I saw a truck the other day, and as soon as I saw it, I felt like the Holy Spirit really just gave me a word about it. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there's some men who drive trucks around our area, and they, they go pick up things that other people have discarded. What, what other people would consider trash, these people actually consider treasure. <laughs> they're, they're hunting for it. They're, they're scrappers is what I call them. And they drive around trucks that look a lot like this one right here. You see this picture. Uh, sometimes they're even bigger than that. You ever seen the ones with the big high sides? I mean, they're just piled high with all different types of metal. This guy's even got like some kind of wooden cabinet in his. 
See, what some people are doing spiritually in their lives is that they're taking their entire life and they're just setting it out beside the road and they're saying, look, I've got no value anymore. I've messed up too much. I, I've made a mess of my life. There's nothing I can do with it. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, I'm a, I'm a scrapper. I go around and I take what other people deem is not valuable and I say, you have value. How much value do you have? You have as much value as the life of the Son of God. You understand that Jesus paid the price for you. My dad used to always tell me I'd collect baseball cards. I'd say, dad, look, this, this is worth this much and this is worth this much and this is worth this much. And he would say, son, it's only as worth as much as someone will actually give you some money for. Can't listen to some magazine somewhere. Listen, I'm telling you that someone has given the life of their son so that you can have eternal life, so that you don't have to die. You're so valuable. God's going around and he's picking you up today and he's saying, I have purpose for you. Would you trust me? And so I wanna pray today. I wanna pray for us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and I want us to come to life for those of us who have been far from God and need to come back home to Jesus. Can we pray together?